Good morning. I have a couple quick announcements before we get into our message today. First, this coming Wednesday at 6 p.m., uh, our architects uh, who, are, who are in the process of, of helping us uh, do the construction out here on the building, who are kind of overseeing all that stuff, they will be here this Wednesday night at 6 p.m. If you have any questions, if you want to talk to them, ask them any questions about their vision, about what's going on, uh, about what they're doing, they have, uh, they have offered to come here and just kind of have a, a question and answer time. So this Wednesday night, 6 p.m., come out and take advantage of that if you have any questions about the new building stuff. Also, next week is our annual Serve to Worship Sunday. Now that's gonna mean some different things, okay? If you, if you wanna come on Saturday night, we're still gonna have a Saturday night service at 5.30, you can come, you'll have uh, uh, just a couple quick songs, uh, we'll have time to take communion, and then we're gonna send you out into the community to serve somewhere. We have sign-up sheets in the back uh, for all that stuff, that's Saturday night. Again, uh, we'll still have a Saturday night service at 5.30. On Sunday morning, it's going to be a little bit different. Things are going to be a little strange. They're going to be a little different here uh, at Spencer Christian. Sunday morning, there will be one service next week. What you'll do is you'll come here at 10 a.m., not 9.30, not 11. If you do, you'll miss it or you'll be too early or you'll be too late. 10 a.m. next week, you'll come. One service. There'll be uh, a couple songs of worship. We'll have communion. We'll have offering. And then we're going to send you out into the community to, to serve because we are doing our Serve to Worship weekend. Uh, and so if you're interested in, in projects that are going on, you don't know what you're doing, you have no uh, clue about where we're gonna have people going, there are sign-up sheets right out these double doors on the table out there. You'll go out there, sign up for some different things, um, and we're gonna send you out and hopefully we're gonna bless uh, the, the community of Spencer County. If, if you don't have a lot of skills and a lot of tools and talents like myself, uh, there will be things for you to do, I promise. It's not just all like, you know, skill intensive and you're like, oh, I have to be good at something. You don't have to be good at anything. Look at me. I'm up here and I'm not good at anything. But look, we're going to send you out. We're going to have different suggestions and different ideas for you. If, if you can't get plugged into some things, there are going to be some stuff where we're, you can, maybe you can just take something and deliver it to somebody and be done in and out real quick. Uh, we want you to be part of this. And we want you to go out and to bless others. So that's why we're doing what we're doing. We also have everybody who comes is going to get one of these uh, fancy t-shirts. Okay, so come next week dressed to serve. Be prepared. Don't come in your Sunday finest unless your Sunday finest is what I'm wearing, and that's cool. All right, so come and uh, you're going to get one of these free t-shirts. We're going to send people out wearing these, uh, and, and hopefully, you know, you'll look as, as handsome as whoever can model this. We don't have anybody modeling. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to throw this out. You're going to get a sneak preview. Somebody's getting a free t-shirt today, but here's the thing. If you get a t-shirt, that means you have to come next week, all right? You can't get a free t-shirt and then like sleep in, okay? I know some of you are thinking, sweet t-shirt. I don't have to come. I can get the t-shirt. No, you have to come next week. Be here at 10 or be here Saturday at 530, all right? And uh, uh, bring this shirt with you because we're not going to give you another one, all right? We're going to keep track. Ivan said we're on a budget and we don't have any extra free shirts to give away. So... If you get a free t-shirt, wear it next week. Bring it with you, okay? Because we're not giving you another one. We're going to keep track. I'm going to write these down, whoever gets it, all right? I also asked Ivan for a t-shirt cannon like they have in stadiums. That was also a no-go. Um, I think there's something to do with insurance uh, and liability. And Ivan also said when you have guns like these, you don't, you don't need a cannon, all right? So I'm going to throw these out. We're going to get two of them. Listen, if you get the wrong size, come see me after service. We'll get you the right size, okay? So, if, like, I think these are both larges. If you need a medium or a bigger one, come see me, and I promise we'll get you one. So I'm going to chuck this one out. No, oh, don't hurt anybody. Do a good job. He actually ducked. He did not want the shirt. <laughs> don't give me the shirt. That means you have to come now, all right? You have to be here next week at 10. Hopefully you're not an out-of-town visitor. If you are, congratulations, you got a free t-shirt, all right? I can't even see who got it over there. All right, I'm going to throw one more out. Typically when I do this, people like raise their hands and they're like, I want a shirt. Nobody wants a shirt. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> that was miserable. All right, I don't have, sorry, who, who got that over there? Nobody, the floor got it. Okay. <laughs> Whew, this is going to be a long day. So next week. Come and I tried, Trent, I'm sorry. Uh, if you would have shown me how to throw like your son, I may have gotten it to you, okay? Next week, 10 a.m., 
pretty pleased with sugar on top. Come on out, do our serve to worship weekend. We're going to go out into the community and bless others. Uh, we're going to shut the doors. We're going to send people out, and hopefully um, you will be as blessed as the people that we are blessing. All right? Now, that, all that being said, last week, we started our new sermon series. Well, not new. We've done it several times in the past. If you've been with us for any amount of time, and I, I guess they took the banner down. Um, all right. <laughs> Should have looked at that last night, I guess. We're doing the uh, So in Love with Jesus sermon series. And this is something that, that's been a motto of Spencer Christian Church for the past few years. So in love with Jesus. And we have three kind of sub points that go with that. And it's to grow, to glorify, and to give. And Doug last week kicked us off with the grow portion uh, of this series. And I, I'm going to be working on glorify today. I'm going to be talking about how we give God glory. If you have your Bibles, you're going to want to turn to John uh, chapter 21. I believe we're going to start in verse 18. Uh, and this verse is not really the main uh, uh, passage. It's just kind of a setup to where we're going today. All right? It's just kind of like a springboard to kind of jump off into what we're doing. So uh, John 21, we're going to start in verse 18. Uh, it's also up on the screen. If you have your phones, you can go to the YouVersion Bible app. Uh, you can check it out there as well, uh, your, your physical Bibles, or you can read along with me on the screen, all right? Let me, set this, uh, let me set this passage up for you. This is, uh, this is Jesus talking to Peter. And this is the famous passage where, where Peter uh, has already denied Jesus uh, several times and, and Jesus has come back and, and then Jesus is talking to Peter. And he's asking him over and over again, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? And every time Peter answers, yes, Lord, I do love you. And Jesus responds with a challenge every time. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Yes, Jesus, you know I love you. And on the third time, Peter gets a little offended because he keeps asking him the same question over and over again. But every time Jesus responds with, feed my sheep. Take care of my people. Feed my sheep. All right? And uh, starting in verse 18, it says this. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted but when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. And then he said to him, follow me. You see, verse 19 of this passage talks about the kind of death that Peter was going to have and that Peter's death would ultimately bring God glory. What does that mean? What does it mean to glorify God? What does it mean to bring God glory? You see, I was talking with Doug and with Jamie this past week, and I was trying to get a handle on kind of what they thought it meant to glorify God, what they thought it meant to bring God glory. Doug, I talked with him before he left for Turkey, and he told me that this, this topic of glorify, of, of glorifying God, was the hardest for him to wrap his mind around. He said, because you can define growth. You can kind of put a tangible thing on, you can kind of put your finger on growth. If, if you're charting physical growth, you can see growth. You know, your genes don't quite fit anymore. That's my kind of growth right now. Um, but you can chart growth. In spiritual growth, you can chart it like through your actions and through your attitudes and through the words that you say and the behaviors that you have. You can chart growth. And you can chart giving. If you're giving of your time, your talents, your money, whatever, you can kind of chart that. Well, I was at church on Sunday. I worked at Sunday school from 9.30 to 10.30. I gave an hour of my time. I put my check in the offering plate. Uh, I, you know, I kind of gave that. You can chart that. But you cannot chart giving God glory. You can't really track it. It's pretty hard to define. But even if it's hard to define, even if it's something that we can't quite wrap our brains around sometimes, it's still something that you and I are commanded to do. It's not like an option. It's not like, well, give God glory if you want to. Maybe you should give God glory today. It is a command. 1 Corinthians 10, 31, this is the main passage that we're gonna be using today. This is the, kind of the main focus of everything that I'm gonna say. 1 Corinthians 10, 31, it says this. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. No matter what you do, you should give God glory. I don't know if, you, if, if that verse impacts you at all, if that means anything to you, if that's, you know, if that's impactful, but the Bible says that whatever you're doing, everything that you're involved in, no matter what it is, Give God glory. 
Look over in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 through 20 in the New Testament. It says, or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you've been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God with your body. Glorify God with your body. We have the Bible commanding us in everything that we do to, to give God glory. We have the Bible commanding us. Your body is not your own. It was bought with a price. Use it to glorify God. Romans chapter 15 verses 5 through 6 says, May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity amongst yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus, so that with one heart and mouth you may glorify God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, in this verse, Paul says that when Christians are united, when you and I are on the same page, when we're together in our efforts to praise Jesus, to follow Jesus, we are glorifying God. When you and I are together, that brings God glory. So I guess the opposite is true. If we're not together, if we're not unified, if we're not on the same page, then we're not bringing God glory. You see, all these verses that we've read, they simply have told us to glorify God, to bring God glory. But we haven't really looked at how we bring God glory. How do you and I glorify God? We've talked about giving and growth and how you can kind of chart that and kind of look at how that works. But how do we glorify God? Matthew 5, 16 says, Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. You see, if we live good lives, if we live the lives that God intended for us to live, then it brings him glory. And when we do that, other people see it. And in turn, they will want to be involved in what you have going on. And because we've lived our lives to glorify God, other people see it. And in turn, they will want to glorify God. You see, this, 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 this picture verse in Matthew 5, it, it, it uses like a word picture of light. And it taps into a lot of what we see in the Old Testament. When we're talking about images of glory. When we talk about images of glory and you refer to the Old Testament, you see a lot of word pictures that use the words like light and, and, and all this different kind of thing. Exodus 40 talks about the Israelites setting up the tabernacle, which was just like basically a huge tent in the desert where they would, would kind of set up camp and worship God in the desert. And in that chapter in Exodus 40, it contains these words. It says, then the cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses could not enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled on it. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Deuteronomy 5, it, it describes Moses, who's talking to God's people, and it says, when, when you heard your voice out of, I'm sorry, when you heard your voice out of the darkness, while the mountain was ablaze with fire, all the leaders and tribes and your elders came to me, and they said, the Lord our God has shown us glory and his majesty, and we have heard his voice from the fire. You see, even though glory, even though giving God glory, even though glorifying God can be kind of hard to describe and it can be kind of hard to give a correct definition to, it seems to me that when you see it, you know it. Glorifying God, the glory of God is about brightness and power and majesty and, and fire and holiness. It's about noticing the things of God and who he is and what he's done. It's about giving God attention and giving God the glory. It's about magnifying him and giving him the credit he deserves and acknowledging the radiance and the splendor and the majesty of God. In our culture today, we tend to be celebrity obsessed we tend to, to kind of elevate people. We tend to kind of put them up on a pedestal. We tend to glorify human beings. And in today's society, in today's culture, we can, we can kind of measure that. We can kind of say glory can be defined as fame and praise and admiration and stardom and eminence and prominence and celebrity and renown. Giving glory is about making a big deal out of somebody. Giving glory is about making much of someone or something. So I guess if we're going to glorify God, if we're going to give our God, the creator of the universe, glory, 
that it's about making God look good. Now, God doesn't need our help in doing that. God doesn't need our help in making himself look good. But it's about pointing others to God. It's about lifting God up and showing other people who he is. It's about putting attention on him and not ourselves. It's about giving God credit and shining a light on the character of God. Again, 1 Corinthians 10.31 Whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. As believers, it is our responsibility. It is up to us to point to God in everything that we do. Our goal as people, our goal as children of God is to point others to him with our actions and our words. They are to point people to God. Our jobs and our family roles, the things that we do at home are to point people to God. Our work and our play, our recreation and whatever it is that we get paid for should be done to the glory of God. Whatever we do, wherever we go, whoever we're with, I hope that we're living lives that show other people who God is and what it is that he's done for us. With all the construction going on here, out here, uh, out front, I was reminded of a story that I've heard uh, several times, but I wanted to kind of bring that story up because it kind of kind of lends credence to what we're talking about here today. A man was walking by a construction site and he saw three workers sweating out in the hot sun and they were, they were all kind of doing the same job. They were all kind of in the same area. And so the man was interested in what was happening. He was interested to see what was being built. And so he walked up to the first man and he said, Hey, what are you working on? And the first man said, I'm laying bricks. Okay. So he goes to the second man and he says, what are you working on? And he says, I'm building a wall. All right. He finally goes to the third man and he says, what are you working on? And the third man says, I am raising a great cathedral. It's glorifying God. It's the attitude that our life portrays. What we're doing for God is something great and it's worthy of his kingdom. And sometimes we have to ask ourselves hard questions. Sometimes we have to ask ourselves difficult questions because a lot of time, and I'm as guilty of it as anybody, we do things to bring attention to ourselves. We do things that, 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 that shine a spotlight on us. Our culture and our society is so obsessed with Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, we're doing it for likes and we're doing it to get retweets and we're doing it to get favorites and we're doing it to get the little double tap heart on Instagram. If you don't know what that is, ask somebody who's probably under 30. You'll you'll figure it out. But anyway, we're doing it to get likes because we want to shine the spotlight on us. Is this more about making myself look good? Or am I making God look good? Is this about hoping that people will see me and like me? Or will my words and my actions cause people to see and like God. Back to our original passage today. Uh, this is what Peter's up against. Peter would have plenty of opportunities to take credit for himself, for his own abilities, his own gifts, his own talents, his own charisma. But would he give glory to God? And if you know anything about the Apostle Peter, he can be a bit like us sometimes. He can pop off a little bit. He can be a bit irrational. He can be a bit emotional. But if you know the life of Peter, you know that everything that Peter did was to bring God glory. Everything Peter did was to point back to Jesus Christ. Peter could have gone off and said, oh, Jesus is dead now. He asked me to start a church, and so maybe I'll start the first church of Peter. Maybe I'll start... Peter, church of Peter and Peter goodness, Peter happiness, and you can all come to my church. And maybe we'll talk about Jesus, but we're going to talk about Peter a lot. Now, if you know Peter, you know 
that Peter went to the ends of the earth to tell people about Jesus Christ. And he went so far as to die for Jesus. See, I invite you to join a lifestyle like Peter's that glorifies God from start to finish. I want you to leave this place today and I want you to be able to say this statement, I will glorify God no matter what I've done and no matter where I go. You see, here we have Peter, a follower of Jesus. And if you know the story about Peter where he denies him three separate times, you know that Peter had a rough go of it for a while. And then I think when Jesus comes back, I don't think it's a coincidence that when Jesus comes back and talks to Peter, I don't think there's any coincidence that Peter asks Jesus three separate times because of the three separate denials. Peter says three times, do you love me, Peter? Yes, I love you, Lord. Yes, I love you. Lord, you know all things and you know that I love you. And after each one of those answers, after each one of those responses, Jesus would give Peter a mission. Take care of my sheep. Feed my sheep. Take care of my people. In one sense, Jesus' purpose for each and every single one of us is exactly the same. To love God with all of our hearts, with all of our souls, with all of our mind, and with all of our strength. And to take care of others. He has called each and every single one of us to look after the needs of other people. He's called us to make a difference in this world. And how that looks for for you and I may be completely different. Some are called to preach, some are called to teach, some are called to confront, some are called to argue, some are called to reason, some are called to be peacemakers. Though each and every single one of us is called to serve and to give and to share. And when you do that, God will bless you and bless those around you. Do whatever it is that you do. If you're a plumber, a construction worker, a teacher, uh, uh, someone in the, you know, a fireman, whatever it is that you do, do it. And do it for the glory of God. I want to bring up one more thing about Peter as we start to kind of wind down here today. You see, Peter had had that rough go of it. Peter, uh, if you know about Peter, he pulls out swords and chops people's ears off. He's denying Jesus left and right. Peter had a past. Peter had some issues that he had to deal with. And if Peter had never gotten beyond those issues, he never would have been able to to, to freely glorify God. Peter could have folded up shop and said, you know what, I, I made mistakes. I've done some pretty bad things. This is as good as it gets. I'll just go home and go back to fishing. See, but instead, Peter was able to look beyond his mistakes. Peter was able to seek out forgiveness. And Peter was able to forgive himself and move past those mistakes in order to be productive in the future. You and I have that same hope, that same forgiveness, the very same forgiveness that Peter sought from Jesus. We have that very same opportunity to seek and ask forgiveness from Jesus. Lord, I've messed up but I don't want it to hold me back from serving you or for living for you or for glorifying you. I need to know forgiveness and then I need help to forgive myself. You and I are in this room today because Peter was able to move past his mistakes. You and I are in this room today because people like the Apostle Paul was able to move past his his mistakes and move past what it is that he'd done in the past. And without that, who knows if we would even know who Jesus was. Now, I'm sure God would have advanced his kingdom in, in some other way or fashion, but because of guys like Peter and Paul who were human and made mistakes just like you and I, we know who Jesus Christ is and we have a hope for the future. How many of you guys have ever seen the movie Lion King? You guys like The Lion King? Lion King is one of my favorite all-time Disney movies. And in this movie, um, The Lion King, Simba, if if you've not seen it, um, I'm going to set it up for you. And if you have seen it, just bear with me because it's it's a cool story, all right? Simba is this young lion cub, and and he gets kind of set up for failure by his uncle. And he blames himself 
for the death of his father. And he goes so far as to kind of run away from his family and run away from his friends and run away from the fact that one day he was going to be a king. And he, in the jungle, he, he ends up meeting a couple characters. And, and, and Pumbaa the warthog, at one point during this time, says, you have to put your behind in the past. And then he gets corrected and says, no, 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 you got to put your past behind you, all right? So it's, you know, he kind of mixes it up, but that's okay. So I want to set up this movie clip right now. We're going to kind of uh, watch this uh, if we're ready. We're good to go? Okay. Um, so what we're going to watch right now is later, um, Simba is grown up, and, and he meets his father's advisor, who is a monkey. And this is the setup for the clip talking about his past. No matter what your past, no matter how many mistakes you've made, no matter how many times you've walked away from God's best, you can start again today. You can start fresh and you can decide today that you will live a life that glorifies God and points other people to Jesus Christ. Maybe in the past you've said, oh God, I will serve you and I'll give my life over to you. But we didn't follow through on that promise. Maybe, maybe right now you're sitting there running through all your past mistakes. You've running through, you're running in your mind through all the ways that you've disappointed God with your words when they didn't line up with your actions. And to you, I say, Jesus looks, you, looks at you and says, I forgive you. This is a new start. Maybe you faced a crisis in your faith that presents, with, presents you with this choice. My actions don't line up with what I believe. And when you get to that crossroads, you can either... Change your actions or change your beliefs. I can't seem to stop what I'm doing. I'm like a dog that returns to his own vomit or a washed pig that goes back to wallowing in the mud. We have to change our actions to line up with our beliefs. Jesus looks at you and says, I, I forgive you. Let me work with you to help make what you live the same as what you believe. Let me tell you this right now here today. You want to know what brings God glory? Repentance. Repentance glorifies God. Humility glorifies God. Honesty glorifies God. Confession glorifies God. And if you continue to glorify God with your whole entire life, Jesus said that even Peter's death would bring God glory. You see, no matter how we end up, no matter what other people have done to you, no matter what you've done to other people, you can glorify God no matter what. I want to leave you with some famous words uh, from an American colonial missionary, and he wrote, these, um, uh, he wrote these to a guy named Jonathan Edwards. This guy's name was David Brainerd, and he died at the age of 29, but he kept a journal during his time as a missionary. And this is what he said. He said, I do not go to heaven to be advanced but to give honor to God. It is no matter where I shall be stationed in heaven, whether I have a high seat or a low seat there, my heaven is to please God and glorify him and give my all for him and to be wholly devoted to his glory. As our praise man makes their way back up, I, I don't know where you are today when it comes to, to glorifying God. Maybe like our cartoon character, maybe like Simba, you've been running away from your past for so long and you've been hiding. You don't even know if you can ever find your way back into God's glory. If a guy like Peter 
can come back into the fold and do amazing things for the glory of God, then God can use you. God can use your life, your actions, your words, your example, whatever it is that you have to bring him glory. We just have to submit and give it over to him. Maybe you're here today and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you want to take that first step. You want to take that first step into giving God glory. You want to take that first step to saying, God, it's not about me anymore. It's about you. And I want to shine the spotlight on you and not me. I want, to do, I want everything in my life to line up with my beliefs and I want my actions to represent your grace and your love and your mercy. We want to offer you that invitation as well. Maybe you're here today and you just need some prayer. You just need somebody to talk to, somebody, somebody to just listen to what it is that you have to say. I'll be right over here on the side as we sing our invitation song. Come on over. Let me pray with you. Let me talk with you. We'll find somebody who can match you up with, who can help you along your journey. You can also connect with us here at this website, or not this website, but this email address. You can connect with us here. If you just want to kind of remain anonymous and kind of stay back, we want to give you that opportunity to, to just shoot us an email and, and we can connect with you and, and try to help you along with your journey as well. Whatever your decision today, we hope that you'll make it. And we hope that through your actions and through your first step out in faith, that others will see it and begin to do the same thing in glorifying God. Let me pray for us and then we'll stand and sing our invitation song. Heavenly Father, God, I'm thankful for the opportunity to be here today, Lord, in your house, surrounded by believers and surrounded by people who hopefully are doing what it is that you will have them do to bring you glory and honor. God, I'm thankful for the example of, of, of men like Paul and men like Peter, God, who, who made past mistakes, who messed up in areas, but you were still able to move past those things and use them to do amazing things for the advancement of your kingdom and to bring you glory. God, I pray that as we, as we leave here today, God, that no matter where we go, no matter what we say, no matter what we do, that everything that we do and everything that we're involved in will be to your glory. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand with me, please.